must have been a couple of months ago now. I remember because I was working on the preparation for a recording for the CD label Naxos, when out of the blue I got an email from a lady called Mandy from Asia. And she apparently was the promotions manager for a company called SMSL. You've probably heard of them. And she asked me if I would be prepared to do a video review of their new amplifier, the VMV A1 Class A amplifier. So I did a little bit of research on this amplifier and I saw that it was really, really small. And with a price point of 650 US dollars, I thought, wow, this can't be for real. And so anyway, I, I wrote a reply saying, dear Maddie, thank you very much. It was great and very kind of you to think of me. However, I just want to point out, you can happily can send it to me, but if I don't find it of suitable audio quality so that it could be matched with our speakers or I could recommend it for other people in their systems, then thank you, but I won't do the review. I will simply return it to whatever address you wish. She said, that's fine. Um, but if I liked it, I could basically keep it. So on that premise, a few weeks later, this parcel arrived. And coincidentally, it arrived on the same day that the Parcel Labs distributor took away the Parcel Labs XA25. You've probably seen the video I've done of it. So it was kind of a coincidence because this huge lump, 30 kilo lump of a parcel amps amp was lifted off into a box. And a couple of hours later, I was installing in the very place this tiny little amplifier. And it came with this rather neat remote control, beautifully made, nicely anodized aluminium, sort of finished aluminium thing. But it just just looks silly, really. I mean, it, it's so small and I just couldn't believe it. So I connected everything up and I sat back and I started listening to some of the recordings that I've been listening to whilst doing the Pass Labs XA25 review. And I was kind of excited and disappointed at the same time because my logical brain was saying, this is going to sound rubbish this is not going to last long, you've got plenty of work to get on with, so just listen to it for a couple of minutes and then pack it up and say thanks very much and send it back to wherever it came from. However, I didn't really like it the very moment it started. There seemed to be some treble missing or something, I don't know, And but my God, it had a lot of punch and bass and what the hell is this? So I let it warm up went off, grabbed a coffee, came back and started again. And my goodness me, was I impressed. Um, basically, it was the full thing. It, it sounded like a good tube amplifier, but with a lot more bass and a lot more control. I mean, when I compared it with the 40 watt per channel monoblocks that I have with a 300B, yeah, maybe the soundstage wasn't quite as, a, as broad and three-dimensional. Maybe, maybe. But the overall image was fabulous and, and, and the sound was great and the bass was deep, deep, deep and, and clear and precise. And when um, at this, the wooden stick hit the snare drum, it was bang, it was on there. Again, like the XA25, not in front of Willie Nelson on his um, album, but just behind him. And when I was listening to some other solo jazz drumming, it was fantastic. And then a couple of weeks ago, I was invited to be on the jury to choose a soloist for a symphony orchestra. And a lot of the soloists who were applying were violinists and they were all playing Mozart violin concertos. So I sat down and listened to number three, number four, and number five, right through one after another. Now, doing this, even with Anne-Sophie Mutter and Herbert von Karajan um, together on the Deutsche Grammophon, normally listening to all three is really, really tiring. Um, but this little amp was great. It, it, 
the violin wasn't harsh, it wasn't sharp, it wasn't screeching, I wasn't getting fatigue. It was quite it's a relaxing experience, but it wasn't like a Luxman Class A amplifier I heard recently, which was like marshmallows. It was all warm and beautiful and cosy, but coloured, sorry to say. And lovely, but no, it wasn't. It was clean, it was precise, had a lot of attack. Um, and a really good little amplifier. So I was kind of amazed. So this got me thinking, you know, in many, many ways, this little 10 watt per channel amplifier was sounding as good, even similar, shall I say, to the Pass Labs XA25. I just couldn't believe it. So I was thinking $650 versus roughly $5,000. Okay, it's only 10 watts per channel, but in my room, which is a modestly sized room, it's six and a half meters long, it's five meters wide, four and a half, five meters wide. I sit two and a half, three meters back from the stereo pair. It's going plenty, plenty loud enough before there's any sign of distortion possibly appearing. And of course, being more or less class A, it's probably a high bias class A, um, there's no unpleasant distortion at any point. So it goes plenty loud enough. And it really proves the point I was making in the previous video about, you know, how much power do you need? Uh, how, how loud is one watt? I mean, it's, it was blasting through. Um, so when I reflect on this, and I know there's going to be a lot of past labs people getting very upset. Don't throw bricks at the screen just yet. Just hear me through. I was thinking if I was starting out again today, I think instead of paying 5,000 euros on the past labs XA25, if I was starting out, I would pay $650 for this little amplifier. And the fourth thousand dollars that I'm saving I would spend on room treatments and I with my partner we would choose some very nice thick lined curtains with a sort of maybe even motorized so with a remote you can just close them and open them maybe have some customized uh, acoustic panels which blend nicely into the room or have them specially printed for that kind of money you can even go out and buy a very comfortable listening chair for example or I could spend the money on a better front end, you know, better turntable or whatever. So, yeah, if I was starting out, that is definitely, definitely what I would do. And why is it? Why? Well, obviously, because this little amplifier, for whatever reason, is absolutely incredible for the money. So the difference between the XA25 and this is minimal. An acoustic treatment would make a much bigger impact on the sound, I would, and the enjoyment of the listening experience than the difference between the two amplifiers. But also because of this, I can switch this thing off. I can unplug it. Ah, well, when I can unplug it, I've got these lovely screw connectors. And then I've got this little amplifier. And I can take this little amplifier into my office and hook it up to my monitors, my desktop monitors, because I've got a pair of vintage Rogers 15 ohm LS35As as my desktop monitors. And I did just that. I unplugged this, I took it next door to the office, and I replaced the little SMSL 50 watt per channel amp that I had on there because it was so small, it was the only thing that fitted neatly on the desk. And I plugged this in instead, and the result was mind-blowing. The difference between this amplifier and the little SMSL was enormous. The extra bass and it, in, in a way there was more bass and more punch coming from this than there was from the XA25 and maybe with a full range 
speaker like we have, which is, goes right down to 38 hertz. Maybe it's a little bit too much at times, especially when you're listening to jazz with a double acoustic, double basses, you know, right up in the mix. But for rock music and classical music, absolutely no problem at all. But when I hooked this up to the LS35As, it was fantastic. I mean, the LS35As were a bit thin and a bit hollow in the bottom end, especially with that budget amplifier. And this solved all of it. The, the bass was powerful, it was punchy, it was fast, it was extremely detailed. The mid-range was warm and smooth, but not coloured, it was just natural. Everything that the LS35A should be, the treble was all there and it was lively, it was nice. Mm, amazing! And I can completely understand what this is about. This works with floor standards, but it shines with smaller monitors and, 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 and stand mount loudspeakers. And so for that reason, I would start with this in my system because it drove the Sibelius single drive, drive cone loudspeakers beautifully. It was, I mean, it was effortless. It's pleasant to listen to. There's nothing that you would really complain about, to be honest. And then what I would do is, I know me, probably after a few years, I would get a bit tired of having this hooked up to the main system, but I don't need to throw it away. I don't need to trade it in for another. I just put it on my desk and run it as a desktop amplifier, for which it's absolutely fantastic. So what I want to say, and I want to conclude this little review, because it's not really a, strictly a review as such, is that, thank you Mandy for sending this to me, and thank you SMSL R&D team. Don't know how you've done it, but you've come up with a really beautiful, high quality amplifier that works extraordinarily well. And for all intents and purposes, gives the competition a massive run for its money. Now, some people have said that it runs hot, but hello. The Pass Labs XA25 runs hot. I mean, it pumps about three, four hundred watts of heat into your room. This amplifier is typically running around 45 degrees, and I've had it on all day, every day for the last few weeks on my desk. And only this part gets quite hot. The rest of it is warm to the touch, yes, but this bit gets quite hot. So if you can compare the amount of heat that this is pushing out, um, it's equivalent to probably a hot coffee cup on your desk. Not even a very hot one, just a, a coffee cup, a freshly made coffee. It's probably the equivalent to that. And that is not any problem at all. So, yeah, I like this very, very much. I like the quality of the finish. It's even got a, a headphone socket out the back. Um, it's very straightforward. I tended to run it when I was with this preamp on 67, because I heard from Thomas you know, on his video that that's when it's running direct. And ironically, I kind of found that for myself that it was sounding good around that level. Um, but for the rest, when it's hooked up to the LS35 A's, I mean, it, it's hardly running at all. It's got plenty of punch. There's no shortage of power with this little one. Um, yeah, sure, if you've got 84 dB uh, loudspeakers like electrostatics or something like that, and you've got a massive room, then maybe this isn't the one for you. But I can highly recommend it. So, I hope you enjoyed this little video. I hope it was useful to you. Um, and until the next one, I would like to wish you very happy listening and enjoy your music. Thank you.